This video was made possible by Hover. Buy your custom domain and email for 10% off at hover.com slash HAI. Well, 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 look what episode it is. HAI number 100. I have finally disproven those strangely specific haters who said I would never make more than 99 medium quality, slightly funny, slightly interesting videos on a nondescript grouping of subjects. Well, look at me now. Anyway, over the past 99 videos, there have been literally hundreds of potential topics that we decided not to do because, even as good as we are at stretching out topics, they couldn't possibly fill up a full 5 minutes. As there's no better way to celebrate 99 of the same format of videos than something different, we're going to cover as many as possible of those today. Welcome to Quarter as Interesting. Speaking of quarters, let's start with a land that doesn't have any. Australia. Back in the 1930s, in Australia's empty bit, there were lots of farmers and emus. Now, farmers and emus go together like fish sticks and frosting. Poorly. The emus would break fences, eat crops, they were just all around destructive, and so the Australians, in keeping with their role as upside down Americans, decided to declare war. Against the emus. Basically, the army went out with machine guns, ammunition, and orders to kill as many emus as possible. Beyond that, it's pretty much a normal war story, except for the opponent being emus, and in the end, the army actually lost because have you seen an emu? Now imagine 10,000 of those. This is overall one of these great title, okay topic kind of videos, which is why, despite receiving literally hundreds of requests for this, that's all you get. Also, there's a salmonella video on it, so just go watch that. But let's transition to Australia's old senile father, the United Kingdom of Great Britain and probably Northern Ireland depending on when you're watching this. Two of the UK's greatest loves are tea and football, the non-moon landing country kind. Now, when a child is born in the UK, they are immediately issued an electric kettle. It's a requirement for living there. These mythical devices are able to bring water to a boil in a matter of seconds, which is crucial for improving the country's TCCT statistics, that's tea craving to consumption time. The problem, though, is that these kettles use a lot of electricity, and therefore, if a lot of people want tea at the same time, the power grid has to predict and adjust to this in order to avoid a blackout. Of course, when everyone wants tea is when a football match finishes. The biggest instance of this was in 1990 when England played West Germany in the World Cup semi-final. After the shootout was finished, in which England lost, everyone watching the match in England went and turned on their kettles to make anger tea, and there was a huge electricity surge of 2800 megawatts, equivalent to 1.1 million kettles being turned on simultaneously. In the past, this was a real concern for power grids during big TV events, and so they had to develop techniques to quickly generate power in response, but nowadays, it's supposedly less of an issue as more and more of the country switches to watching half as interesting videos at any time they want, among other online video things. This also wasn't an issue back in the 1890s, partially because not as many people were watching TV, partially because time, as a concept, was iffy. The iPhones at the time didn't set the time automatically, so people had to somehow get the accurate time from public clocks. In Greenwich, England, there were a few solutions to this. One was a ball at the top of the Greenwich Observatory that would drop at 1pm exactly, but not everyone could see this. One was a series of telegraph signals that would go off at certain times per day, but not everyone had a telegraph station. The third solution was to buy the time from a lady named Ruth Belleville. Every morning, she would set her super accurate pocket watch to the accurate time of the Greenwich Observatory and then go around the town by horse and buggy to give the accurate time to those who subscribe to her service. I'd say with having already figured out how to subscriptionize time that she was ahead of her time, but as we know, she was right on time. Ah, oh, shut up me. But let's transition to England's favorite hexagon, France. If you want to get from the beautiful city of Nantes to the beautiful island of Noirmoutier, you have two choices. You can take the bridge like a boring, oatmeal-eating dude, or you can drive through the frickin' ocean like you're the Prophet Moses back from the dead to enable slightly more convenient underwater road routes. The under-ocean road in question is the Passage du Bois, which is, and I can't stress this enough, literally underwater. At least for part of the day. You see, the coast of France has some of the largest tides in the world, with this particular area seeing about a 20 foot or 6 meter difference between high and low tide. That's enough to completely reveal this road at low tide. Cars are only allowed to drive on it for the 90 minutes before and after each low tide, making its usage limited, but it can save about a whole 10 or so minutes in comparison to taking the bridge when coming from the north. But let's now head west and then south to talk about one of the battles of the American Civil War. More south? More, more south? Like beyond the sofa on the porch kind of south? Yeah, there. 
Now, I'm no rocket scientist, but based off what I know about South America, it is not the America in which the movie took place. So why was there an American Civil War battle there? Well, this is a quick one. Basically, off the coast of Brazil there chilled a Union boat that was the OG US, and in came a Pacific-bound Confederate boat. Those were the breakaway bad guys. Both stopped in this Brazilian port. Upon seeing the bad guy boat, the Union boat sent a letter over basically saying, You what, mate? To which the Confederate boat responded, I'm just trying to get repaired and leave. To which the Union boat responded, boom, as it fired its cannons at it in the middle of the night. Those cannonballs missed, but then they exchanged musket fire, the Union boat rammed the Confederate one, boarded it, and won. The Brazilians understandably were not pleased about the US having a battle on their turf, but the US, surprisingly, didn't care, even though the unprovoked attack was like, full on, without a doubt illegal. But anyways, that's why there was a US Civil War battle in South America. Now, if you ever become a mid to late 1800s naval captain, you'll know that the one thing that you'll desperately need is respect. Well, I guarantee you that the best way to get your sailors to respect you is to have a professional looking email address at a custom domain. Nothing screams in control like captain at lookatmyhat.cool. That email, or really any email using their over 400 domain extensions, can be yours in about 120 seconds by going to hover.com slash HAI. You can also, of course, just buy a domain from Hover, as they're the best place to buy your corner of the internet before someone else steals your domain name. Whether it's an email or a domain, you can get 10% off your first purchase by going to hover.com slash HAI and you'll be supporting the show while you're at it.